And now, part two of the XJ Talk Show. And I, I went on there with a very clear intent of letting these folks know what was going on on our site. And if they wanted to have a rebuttal or have anything to say about it, we're more than welcome. And I was permanently banned from this site for I don't know why. Uh, spam? Un- no, unwanted po- I can understand unwanted posts. <laughs> Nobody likes to be told that uh, you know they have a terminal illness either, but you don't shoot the doctor. Now, I think somebody got a little butt hurt. Uh, they may be <laughs> a Cherokee owner, them, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, a 2014 Cherokee owner KL. themselves. And uh, and they uh, they they got their panties in a bunch. They took a took it as a personal uh, a personal attack, yeah. and they dealt with it in the only way they knew how by eliminating any possible future of you hurting their feeling again. So, I said, <laughs> so I took the the opportunity to go over to the uh, autoguide.com website and look up the contact us and send an email and basically told them the situation. I didn't say anything about uh, wanting to be unbanned. I, I don't care. I, I said what all, all I wanted to say. Right. Uh, and, uh, uh, but I wanted to, uh, I took the opportunity to invite them to do an interview for the XJ talk show and discuss not only their, you know, is this their corporate, uh, policy to ban people from sites that just happen to be not owners of the vehicles that the the site is looking at i i I was really shocked by that i get the feeling that this was a a past site that somebody had started and auto guide as they've done with several jeep sites swooped in bought it but left the person or persons in charge and and now this uh jeep forum club is that right jeep forum club.com uh no it's jeep cherokee club there we go thank you uh I get the feeling they left the same people in charge of it and they're acting like they're the owners. Yeah. And just, I don't like this. You're going away. And, and guys, I know I've harped on this. This is the reason why we started xjtalk.com. We didn't want people members having to deal with moderators and owners that have knee jerk reactions to things that they, that they don't like. Now, if you don't know, I'm the owner of xjtalk.com, but very early on, I wanted to surround myself with some good folks to be moderators because I didn't want to be that kind of, that guy that goes, well, that pisses me off. You're out of here. So I wanted to get people involved that I could trust and that they would have differing opinions uh, from me. And we would all vote about how we would handle things. And, and I would be there to kind of guide and direct. But for the most part, at least 90%, it's whatever the moderators want to do. And we all have a voice. So uh, I, because xjtalk.com needs to be a friendly site where people can come and express themselves as long as they're respectful to other people. And that's, and that's why it was a good thing when the moderators pointed out we weren't being respectful to the members of this other site. So that's exactly why they're there is to call out things like that. And, and we cleaned up the, 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 the posts that were there and mm. uh, continued on. Now, sadly, the post has been removed. Nah, wow. Well, you so, know, and, and, and that was a call that the moderators made. It's uh, it's one that I agree with because that's why they're there is to make that decision. But I would prefer not to have posts removed from the site. I think it discourages people from posting and uh, I, w- I would much rather prefer that we go in and edit the posts and then through, so through PM or some other private communication means, we talk to the poster and explain to them why we had a problem with this, why we had to edit it. And when we do edit it, it needs to be very, very light amount of editing. I don't really want to change the, the message I just want to remove the bits that are the sticky bits, the poking bits. <laughs> well, look, I'm, I'm going to continue to um, not pull any punches when it comes to the bashing of whatever Jeep decides to release next that is going to uh, piss us off. But uh, but <laughs> I've always done it in the format of bashing the vehicle, not the owners. Yes. And, uh, and that's kind of where this comes from. We gave them the opportunity. They, in my opinion, kind of handled it wrong. 
Uh, but you know, Hey, oh, oh well, uh, it's certainly very entertaining that this, uh, that this all came up and it's definitely a funny story, Tony. So yeah. if anything ends up coming, if, if auto guide ends up uh, getting back to you, are you going to uh, let us know? Absolutely. And, uh, I don't know if you recall or not, but somebody, uh, from auto guide was trying to purchase xjtalk.com. They were contacting me through email and they had done so some six, eight months prior. And, uh, I was telling them, no, thanks, no, thanks, no, thanks. And then, uh, I guess maybe two, three months ago, uh, maybe longer, they contacted me again. And this had happened right after uh, I had posted some stuff up about uh, the, how, you, how do you guys feel about these Jeep sites being purchased by a corporation? Not necessarily that it's a bad thing. It's just usually an increase in advertisement and uh, a little more distancing of perhaps the the one-on-one that you have with the people that, that own the site. Because you know, if, if you're a Jeep Cherokee owner and the person that owns and runs the hobby site is also a Jeep Cherokee owner, I think you feel a little more a kinship with, with that person and the site itself. And then when that changes to a corporation that may not care a damn about your Cherokee, whether it be a 2014 or a real one, uh, <laughs> you see what I did there? Uh, <laughs> that uh it, it just you know kind of sullies the 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 experience the forum experience and and actually i asked that the guy i said hey I, I just did a post about this and we're going to be talking about this on the uh the podcast uh, i'd like for you to do an interview and kind of explain what you, what you guys are doing with it, kind of the same deal that i was doing with the 2014 come defend yourself my feeling is is that this is a bad thing and you're the people that are, uh, you know, you would represent the people that are buying these sites. So come in and, and do a t- uh, uh, an interview with us and, and let's hear your side of it. And uh, I, I said, go, you know, listen to the podcast, get a feel for the show and uh, let me know. And uh, I think he did. And he came back within probably an hour or two and says, I don't think it would be in our best interest to uh, do an interview with you. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Afraid, <laughs> afraid of the hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and I understand that there's nothing, and I've, I've said it, said it before. There's not necessarily anything wrong with a corporation owning a website. It's just, I don't know. It kind of feels funny. It's like going to a prostitute instead of having a girlfriend is what <laughs> is kind of what I think. Well, hey, I'm going to uh, switch gears here a little bit, uh, Tony. And speaking of illegal activities, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, my Honda was stolen back in December. I got it back oh, right away. There's been all kinds of good stuff going on about that. Uh, there, obviously, there was some damage that was done to it. Uh, the kid who had stole it, uh, he was released under a supervised release and very quickly ended up uh, finding himself another stolen car and finding himself, Shocking. Finding himself in the custody of police <laughs> once again. Uh, so I, I got a call from the district district attorney's office this week and they're like, Hey, uh, you still interested in restitution? And I'm like, well, duh. Yes, of course I am. She's like, well, the, the window of opportunity is closing quite rapidly. I don't know how your paperwork got lost in the shuffle, but, um, nonetheless, we, you know, we're having to have an emergency hearing here. Uh, can you make it to court on Friday? And I'm like, uh, well, I guess, yeah. Uh, so they said, okay, okay well, well, I'll call you right back. Uh, you know, let me, let me get a hold of the, uh, of the, the district attorney's office or, you know, the, uh, the uh, prosecuting attorney or so I, there was somebody that she had to talk to and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll call you right back. Okay, whatever. So basically it was, uh, I would only have to show up if the restitution, um, was being, uh, was being questioned or, um, or they wanted to fight it. Uh, or if the trial was going to get held over, the restitution hearing was going to get held over. Uh, I get a call back yesterday saying, yeah, you're going to have to show up because they're going to contest the restitution. I'm like, how oh, the heck holy are they going to contest the restitution? The guy's He's been found to, guilty, right? Yeah, he, he admitted to it. He <laughs> admitted to it. So, so uh, here's what happened is that uh, she got a hold of the the um, his defense team or whatever, uh, <laughs> probably, a, a, probably a public defender or whatever said, hey, there's going to be a restitution hearing. Uh, does your client, uh, you know, your client has the right to uh, contest this. Uh, and if he contests it, then he's going to get pulled out of jail and, and has to go to court and uh, defend his reasoning for contesting it. And I'm sure that the guy's just pissed off because he's locked up in jail. He's got a, one hell of a sentence in front of him. He's not getting out anytime soon. And uh, he wants to see some sunshine. So he's going to contest this. 
uh, get, you know, the handcuffs, uh, go for a little joy ride in the van, uh, and go and have his court in day. Unfortunately, it's going to be the same day that I have mine. So I get to confront the guy who stole my car. That's great. That's be just wonderful. Let me tell you. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to court, uh, as we are recording this, it's going to be tomorrow. So that's Friday. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, that's, it's going to be very interesting to find out what's going to happen. So I've spent, uh, half the, half the week here trying to, to get a bunch of evidence all put together, you know, uh, auto body company quotes for all the damages done pictures that I've got of all the damages and, and crap that he left in my car. I was going to say, make sure you do the trash too. Cause there's, you know, there's, yeah. there should oh, be a cleanup the- fee. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, and I asked, <laughs> and what questions. the hell was that smell? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I, uh, that's, I don't know if I'm going to be actually <laughs> able to address him personally or not. Put, uh, it's put on there, take a, lot of, put on there a, a bottle of Febreze. Actually mm-hmm. put two bottles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, you know, as far as legal legalities go, whether or not I'm going to be, uh, you know, able to, to actually address him or not. Um, well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to give him a really nasty scowl. Hey, before, before you, the whole thing starts, if you have an opportunity, I'd like for you to do something. Ask, a ask no no that <laughs> too with him <laughs> that too but ask the bailiff or the judge or who is whoever's available the district attorney ask them if you're able to do the show on thursdays 10 p.m from jail you know just in case just in you case get out of hand I, uh, dive over the bench <laughs> and give it what for <laughs> that would i see i'd be the type of person to actually ask that question and then people look at me funny, like, are you serious? Your honor, uh, could I have five minutes alone, please? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, guys, uh, I'm sure you'll, I'll, I'll have some stories to tell you uh, next episode. So stay tuned to episode 127 to find out what happens with Josh's restitution hearing. Well, I'm glad you're keeping us up to date on this because I had forgotten about it. Well, it's a lot of fun. I, I, it's certainly interesting. Not something that happens every day and certainly not to everybody. So I uh, figured, uh, hey, if you guys get a little bit of uh, entertainment from my suffering or from my experiences, then so be it. Hey, guys, we got a real short but good uh, segment here on our uh, uh, Wrangler segment this week. And uh, I just want to take an opportunity to remind you guys that we're not only an XJ Talk website. No, we haven't started the 2014 Jeep Cherokee site yet. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> We do have a Wrangler uh, website, a regular Wrangler forum. Same type of format as uh, xgtalk.com. Friendly, no criticism. It's called, strangely enough, wranglertalk.com. So a uh, little slow over there. Uh, like I've said before, it only takes a good uh, two, three, maybe five people that are dedicated that go over there and post and start talking and answering questions, and you will see it explode. So if you'd like to be in on uh, a new uh, Wrangler site, it, well, it's been, up, it's been around a while, but uh, as far as new is getting started, please come join us at wranglertalk.com. Hi, I'm Rob from CoolGuyStuff.tv, bringing you another segment of All Things Wrangler. This week, we're changing it up just a bit because I am in Vegas on location at a convention. Uh, this convention is called the OMG 2014 convention. You could check it out online at omg2014.org. But what it is, it's a convention held by stupidcancer.org. Now, uh, that is an organization that basically tries to bring awareness and, and kind of facilitate other uh, services for young adults and kids that have cancer. So every year there's about 72, 75,000 kids and young adults diagnosed with cancer. Out of that, about 50% of them make it. Uh, so you can see how this is real important. Anyways, again, check that out at omg2014.org. Uh, you can get all the info there. And for today, we're going to cover something called the Jeep Wrangler Cargo Management System. Okay, so what that is, is that actually is still in concept. Uh, the guys at Mopar are, are kind of out there in Moab to this week. Uh, testing out some different things, different concepts. One of them is this uh, this cargo management deal. It came right from the Cherokee, so I'm not sure if it's the older Cherokees that had something similar to this, or if it's right out of that uh, that new one that they have out. But uh, it's essentially a a way to keep your packs in place. Okay. So it's kind of like a strip that, that connects right to the cargo gate and you can attach a trail kit and like a first aid kit, maybe your lunch or whatever else you want to this thing. And it's really cool. I, uh, I noticed there is a YouTube video 
uh, just kind of YouTube Jeep Wrangler cargo management system, and it should come up. It's by Chrysler, so it's just a quick little minute blurb on it. Uh, very cool. I hope it does come to market, and more importantly, once it comes to market, I can't wait to see what the aftermarket guys do to make it even cooler. What made me even think of this was uh, just yesterday I was driving down the uh, street, just normal. I wasn't speeding. I wasn't driving like an idiot or anything. And I just turned right and I had an entire five gallon bucket spill out into my cargo area. And I had tools, nails, screws, a million things in the stupid five gallon bucket. And it was a nightmare to pick up and it was super annoying. So I thought, oh yeah, that cargo management system I saw the other day would be perfect. If I had it right here, we can, uh, I could have avoided this mess. Anyway, check it out on YouTube, Jeep Wrangler Cargo Management System. If you want to find me, X, Rob Spencer X on Twitter, coolguystuff.tv. Until next week, guys, thanks for listening, and check out stupidcancer.org. <laughs>Hey, that's great, Rob. Thank you. I'm going to have to check that out myself because, guys, you don't know until you've uh, flipped a, a, a Cherokee on its side or worse, on its top, how much stuff <laughs> that you're carrying because it's pretty much going to be all on top of you. And if it's a high lift jack, it might kill you. Ooh, so yeah. take the time to look around and think about all the potentially deadly, deadly objects that you have in your Jeep and uh, think of ways of tying them down. Hey, you know, Josh, uh, with this uh, audible.com thing that we're doing, uh, it reminded me of the, uh, the audio, uh, audio book that I have uh, on my phone and uh, my audible.com uh, app, uh, the, uh, the great Kristen uh, Johnston uh, book, Guts. And I started listening to that again the other day, and uh, it was neat uh, because of uh, how we're doing this audible thing that uh, it reminded me. And it's just really enjoyable to be riding to and from work, listening to a book being read to you, and in this case, by the author. Yeah, there's a, there's been a couple books that, that I've picked up. Uh, one of them was uh, from an author who I've I've actually uh, have read several, well, not read. I've listened to several other, other of his audio books, and that's Scotty Siegler. He's a, a Northwest native. He lives up in Seattle, in fact, and he does some fantastic sci-fi type stuff. And and by sci-fi, I don't mean like you know Star Trek type sci-fi. I mean like kind of weird, um, you know, bizarre uh, type of infection. I mean, this one I'm, I'm reading is I think it's called Infection. I'm listening to, um, and it, it's it's just way bizarre. It's it's definitely uh, sci-fi, and it's really cool. It has me on the edge of my seat at work while I'm bored, and and listening to audiobook is is one way to well keep me sane. And uh, guys, you can get in on this kind of stuff as well. Very easy to do. Audible.com is where you go. They've got over 150,000 titles uh, across pretty much any imaginable topic you can think of, like from the sci-fi that I was talking about to, uh, well, some uh, some biography type stuff like Tony was talking about there. To get you started, the XJ Talk Show has got your hookup. All you got to do is go to audibletrial.com slash XJ Talk Show and instantly get one free title of your choice. That's right. You head over to the website, you sign up, you get one free title of your choice. Any book you want, anything that you want for free on audible.com. All you got to do is sign up through the audibletrial.com slash XJ talk show. And well, that's how you get something for nothing, guys. Hook them, hook yourself up, hook us up. And uh, well, we're all going to be listening to some good audiobooks here real soon. Yeah. And uh, I personally would recommend uh, XJ talk show, audible book, XJ talk show, audible book, <laughs> when you're not listening to a podcast or a book, you should be on xgtalk.com or wranglertalk.com. I think I got it covered, right? I mean, that's that's your whole entertainment uh, future right there in front of you. Yep, exactly. And we got you covered as well with the Jeep Tips coming up right now. Another, uh, another fantastic Jeep Tips, I believe, by Steve, 4.3 LXJ. This one, about rock sliders. Yes, sir. And now for a disclaimer. Jeep Tips is for entertainment purposes only. If you choose to follow these tips, man up and take the responsibility for your own actions. If you cannot or you feel that working on your Jeep is beyond your abilities, seek the help or advice of a trained certified mechanic. Got a tip? We do. It's time for Jeep Tips. Today I'd like to talk about rock sliders. This is a pretty easy upgrade. If you have an XJ, YZ, ZJ, WJ, CJ, Liberty, whatever, there's 
many companies out there that make rock sliders for all of these vehicles. And uh, you might be asking, well, what's a rock slider and why do I need one? Well, a rock slider uh, protects your rocker panel. That's that area that's right underneath your door. And in a uh, XJ, the Cherokee, and also the uh, ZJ and WJ, Grand Cherokees, um, that part is kind of vulnerable and it's very important. It's uh, part of what forms the structural integrity of your unibody and it's considered a strong area. So you want to kind of preserve it if you can. Um, it uh, helps keep your vehicle stiff. Uh, and of course, we, we've had another uh, uh, episode on uh, in reinforcing the, the frame area so that there's not quite so much load on that on the rockers. But the rockers are important and uh, you really need to keep them intact. Uh, I know that uh, Tony has uh, found a stump with uh, his rock rockers and uh, Josh actually bent his rock slider out of the Tillamook State Forest and I have this, uh, I have three dents in my rocker panels all from the same rock. I've managed to get the same one three times over a period of about 10 years. So uh, Rock sliders are important, keeps those rockers intact, and so I, I built my own set, but uh, they're easy to get. Um, there's many different companies that have them available. There's JKS, Orfab, Smittybilt, 4 by Guard, Rocky Road, Acme Jeep Parts, um, and the list goes on. There, there's so many companies out there that are making them now for... Uh, just a number of vehicles and they uh, they can look good they can look a little bit ugly but uh, most of them look pretty good now uh, a lot of them are uh, using uh, modern uh, techniques for forming and machining and and uh, cutting metal and uh, some of them look pretty sharp most all of them mount in two places there's a couple of places that bolt to the frame and then there's or sometimes they're welded and then they're they're bolted to the pinch seam underneath the rocker panel and uh, it's actually a very strong area uh, it's a good place to bolt to and if you uh, have these rock sliders bolted there and you happen to come down on something what it does is it spreads all of the forces out along the uh, rocker and uh, possibly the frame and it makes it so that um, it's not such a shock to the vehicle. It may feel like a shock when you hit because it uh, is kind of a jolt. But uh, as far as the vehicle is concerned, it spreads the forces out so you don't end up with dents and uh, things bending. Now, if you're a fabricator and you want to build your own, there's a couple of different things you can do that will uh, uh, help your rocker situation. Uh, one is you can do something called boat sides, and uh, this is a, uh, a rocker that goes from the frame, you've got to weld it in, and you cut out the rocker panel itself up even with the bottom of the door opening, and you weld uh, a plate to the edge of the door opening there, even with it, and so it ends up with a slanted uh, look so, sort of like the bow of a boat and that's why they're called boat sides uh, this is a good deal uh, it gives you a lot of clearance it gives you a lot of strength and uh, if you're real handy and you've got some spray paint after you can put on afterwards not a bad deal um, but you need to be able to uh, weld sheet metal to thicker metal uh, to be able to do this you're going to need a good wire feed welder and, and know how to use it um, the other option that you can do that's that's uh, popular is to cut out the rocker panel all except for the pinch seam and uh, weld in a uh, either a 2x6 or a 3x6 square tubing, well it would be rectangular tubing, in that area. And what this does is it uh, gives you a square tubing rock slider like the kind that we talked about you could buy, but uh, it has the advantage of being about three or four inches taller, so you gain some clearance that way. And uh, if you get it all welded into your unibody and so forth, uh, it'll make that area quite strong and you won't have to worry about anything. 
all in all, rock sliders are easy to bolt on for the most part, the ones you buy. Um, you can probably install them in about uh, no more than two hours. If you have a little help, you can get it done in an hour uh, with average tools. Uh, they look nice. Uh, they make your rig look more like a, a rough and tumble 4x4, and of course they're functional. Uh, another nice thing about them is, is you can sort of use them as a step if you need to uh, for people crawling in. And of course it adds to the strength. And there's one other function that you get from them that uh, is probably not talked about too much, and that is uh, side crash safety. Um, our XJs were not really built to take a side impact, uh, and these will give it uh, some strength in that area so that if you do have a side impact, it provides a little greater measure of safety so that the body doesn't uh, fold in so bad if somebody hits you. So uh, if you can't justify it from a damage point of view, you can certainly justify getting something like this from a safety point of view. So it, all in all, it's a win-win situation. Hey, this is Tony. And this is Josh from the XJ Talk Show. We want to thank you for calling our 24-7 voice line. Yes, we do. Just leave your first name and your question or comment. There's no guarantee, but we may play your message on the podcast. Oh, and don't worry about keeping it clean. We'll take care of that. Now it's your turn to speak at the beep. Hey, this is Joliet. Johnny went outside to go to work last night, and there was a 2014 park next to me. Uh, I was wondering if you could recommend a good car cover, something that might disguise it to make it look like a Mini Cooper or something. I know Jeeps like to park next to each other, but ain't a real Jeep, so uh, just hoping you guys have some ideas. All right, bye. The immediate thing that came to mind was bird droppings. I thought he wanted to cover for his. <laughs> hey, this is Nikki G, and I just saw on the news that Ford doing a promotion that uh, they placed a Mustang on the observation deck of the Empire State Building. Yeah, Jeep tried that with the uh, 2014 <laughs> Cherokee, but the uh, tourists kept trying to push it over the railing. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll chat you later. Have a good one. Bye. And now it's time for Scooby-Doo Mystery Files. Today's episode, The Case of the Missing Heart. Jeepers, I think heart theft did it. Ah, oh, and I would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for my forum name being so obvious. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs> that was some heart theft, if you didn't get the joke. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is Nikki D. And, uh, Tony, as Iron Man, would that make the moderator of the new 2014 Cherokee Forum Minotaur Iron Man's arch nemesis? <laughs> oh. Yeah, see you later. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs> good one. Hey, Tony and Josh. This is XJ and Jake. Colin, I was just listening to the podcast from last week again. Uh, Tony, I, uh, I definitely think you should look into those zipper pulls uh, to help your wife get her top off. Then maybe we can stop talking about the hot ball joints. All right, guys, have a good week. Keep your shiny side up. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, thank you for anyway <laughs> for all the voicemails. Oh, I guess uh, Tony's wife needs some help getting her top off. Okay. So, <laughs> hey, summer is right around the corner, guys, and uh, we all love going topless. Hey, I've got a sunroof on my Jeep, about as close as I'm going to get. But I can't go topless. I'm too close to the airport, Josh. Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm going to have to uh, bronze you up like Jeep did with one of those concepts. I'm too white for that, man. I just get skin cancer. Well, hey, you guys can stay indoors and do all the surfing you want. we got plenty of places for you to go to get your XJ Talk fix. We are on Facebook. We're even on Twitter, so make sure you're signing up and following us. Stitcher Radio and TuneIn.com. You can find live feeds of us there as well. And iTunes. You, of course, are always mentioning iTunes, where you guys can find our show archive at. Of course, YouTube.com. Well, we have a channel there, always posting up new videos. And this is where we broadcast a live show every Thursday night, 10 p.m. Central. Yeah, I want to thank Rob and, uh, of course, uh, Steve, uh, 4.3 LXJ on xjtalk.com for our uh, Jeep Tips, Wrangler and Jeep Tips segment tonight. And uh, really interesting about the uh, the sliders. And 
I know firsthand because that uh, little Fiat sideswiped me coming home one night. And uh, the big tires, uh, because of the video up on YouTube, that's one of the reasons to subscribe to us on YouTube. There's a video on there about how I was a victim of hit and run. And one of those little red Fiats came up and uh, sideswiped me, but with the... Uh, the detours, uh, rock uh, sliders, and frame stiffeners, and the big tires, I got no mark. <laughs> it was enough for it to, you know, jostle me a little bit in the Jeep. Went to pull over, and they took off. So, uh, you know, you never can tell what a slider might do for you, both on and off-road. So, great information from uh, from Steve. And uh, don't forget about tying your cargo down. Uh, look at something. Uh, look at those cargo, uh, cargo nets, cargo tire downs uh, bolts shit down to the to the floor guys don't get hit in the back of the head with it absolutely and speaking of good information if there's something that you want to find out about at one of our shows there's a topic that you can't find or you uh, don't remember which episode it was on head over to xjtalkshow.com we just uh, got a search field over there you can type in anything you want and uh, hopefully get you to the right episode and of course xjtalkshow.com and xjtalk.com that's why we're here guys make sure you're telling a friend all about us have a great jeep week See you next time. My favorite site is XJTalk. XJTalk. XJTalk.com. It's where you go when you're not off-road.